I will. I will. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Okay. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome uh, to worship on this Lord's Day. Uh, this is Transfiguration of the Lord Day, and you'll hear more about that. But it's uh, the, the last Sunday before the beginning of Lent, and um, uh, we move into um, to a new season in the, the life of the liturgical year in, in the church. Uh, I invite you to, uh, as we gather, to fill out the registration pad at the end of the queue toward the aisle, and also to fill out, uh, well, if you have a, uh, fill it out and pass it to those who are sitting with you in the queue. If you have a, uh, a joy or a concern that you'd like to share with the rest of the congregation and have lifted in prayer, you can fill out one of these uh, rectangular cards you see in front of you in the pew and around the time of the children's moment we'll ask you to hold those up and uh, one of the uh, ushers will collect those and bring them forward. Uh, uh, just, just, this is uh, John Grady's first Sunday directing the bell choir. So yeah. And thank you, <laughs> and, uh, and thank you, Bill Flair. Um, uh, also, um, 
uh, uh, Jenny Caldwell is our worship leader, and it's her, her first Sunday uh, uh, being worship leader with us. So thank you. <laughs> uh, Sunday morning live, there's a, a, a mistake in the announcements. Uh, we are not looking at propositions. Um, if we were, it would be all balanced and not partisan, but we're not. Um, uh, so, uh, the uh, Adult Study Sunday Morning Live is looking at the story of the Transfiguration. Uh, so, uh, if, if you want to do the propositions, you're welcome to go, but don't go and expect that that's the subject. So, um, uh, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. And um, uh, that kicks off the, the season of Lent with the uh, imposition of ashes on the forehead. And so it will be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock um, uh, here in, in the uh, sanctuary. Uh, but I should tell you uh, before um, all of that that following the service, we will have um, our... Uh, our annual congregational meeting. And so what I'm going to, what we'll do is um, have the benediction and then I'll, I'm going to ask that uh, you um, uh, sit back down and uh, maybe visit in the sanctuary for about five minutes and then we'll have the annual congregational meeting and then we'll go out for uh, refreshments uh, uh, hosted by the, the deacons. Um, any other announcements? Okay. Let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as the uh, uh, as the bell choir uh, plays us uh, into and through uh, that preparation.
call to worship. So, while Jesus was still speaking, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, Lord. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Let us worship God. Thank you. 
three tents. It means like three worship tents, uh, uh, or maybe tabernacles. One for you, Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. I'll just stay up here. This is so awesome. Yeah? And, and then, and then, uh, then all of a sudden, this cloud comes over them. And they can hardly see anything. Because it's like being in the fog. Anybody in the fog this morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, or yesterday, even before probably. So, and, and then the fog lifted. Well, it, there's this voice that said, this is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. And then the fog lifted, and it was only Jesus. And then they went back down the mountain. <laughs> but the story tells us that of all the things we, we have to, to teach us, to teach our hearts, and teach us how to live and how to love. Jesus is the one to listen to. It's Jesus who teaches us how to live and how to love like no other. How to live and love for God. So, let's pray, and we're going to ask uh, Jesus to help us to do that, to live and love for God. Gracious God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us Jesus. We thank you for Moses and Elijah, but we thank you for Jesus especially for the special ways that he shows us and teaches us how to live and how to love and how to live for you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you everybody. Oh, well we were going to do that later in the service, but I'll tell you what, we're going to do it now, and we'll do it later, too. <laughs> we'll do it twice today. Right, let's pray. Gracious God, oh, that's not the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. People learn that I need help. <laughs> so our uh, scripture reading uh, is uh, that story, and as we prepare to hear it, let's ask God for, well, it actually our scripture reading refers to the, that story, and as we hear it, uh, let us uh, pray to God for help and understanding using the uh, prayer for illumination. God, our light, make us attentive to your word as to a light shining in a dark place. That seeing your truth, we may live faithful lives until that great day dawns and morning star rises in our hearts. So our scripture comes from uh, the book of 2 Peter. Now this is a, uh, a book that's uh, of the Bible called uh, it's one of the books called the General Epistles. 
and it's attributed to Peter the disciple, uh, though uh, many scholars believe that it's uh, uh, someone putting words in the mouth of Peter or the pen of Peter um, uh, in a generation or two, or two later. Because part of the, the trouble and the, the angst it deals with is people getting discouraged with the faith because it's been a couple of generations and Jesus isn't back, he hasn't returned yet. And so, uh, uh, so Second Peter here uh, portrays Peter saying, but you know, this is what I experienced. Um, and it's a reference to the transfiguration, which we just heard about. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus. But we have been eyewitnesses of his testimony, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will. But men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that you will uh, open our hearts and our minds and our lives to your, your word, and that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable uh, in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever get up in the middle of the night, in the dark, you know, I'll do that sometimes. Sometimes uh, I don't know where I am. Uh, other times I know exactly where I am. I just can't see where I am. And other times I neither know nor can see where I am. And I bump into something or I stub my toe or, or, or what have you. And life feels like that a lot of times. not sure where we are, or not be able to see clearly, and sometimes experiencing some fear around that. You know, many feel as if we live in, in dark times. We have a, a nation uh, that's divided, and uh, the, it, among those divisions are people uh, who feel as if we live in dark times. You know, if you're a, re a re Republican or a Democrat, it doesn't matter. You have your own reasons for thinking that there are dark times, right? You know, um, in the church, and especially mainline denominations, we feel as if we're in uh, dark times because uh, church attendance and church membership in, uh, on a national level continues to decline. As a matter of fact, in the Presbyterian Church, it's been declining since the year I was born. It's not my fault. <laughs> really. Except I confess that sometimes I feel as if it is. But there are dark times. There, even though there are moments of, you know, of brightness. And in each 
person's life, whether the broader times are bright or, or dark, um, there are dark times that come along. And especially when there are divisions. Now, the book of Second Peter was written in the context of some uh, dark, broader dark times, such as the oppression and uh, and persecution in uh, in society and from the Roman Empire, but also within the life of the church. Because one of the divisions going on was that there were people who had so, for so long been expecting the return of Jesus and anticipating that and having that fuel their faithfulness. But then said, you know, it's been a long, long time. Where is Jesus? Maybe none of it's true. Maybe he's not coming back. And some felt that and were falling away from the church. And some who weren't falling away were still saying that and it was discouraging others. And we have this, so we have this letter that we call Second Peter to encourage. And it tell, it recounts a story from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You know, from Jesus, the life of Jesus, where Jesus goes up on the mountain. We call this story the Transfiguration. Jesus goes up on the mountain with Peter and James and John, and he's transfigured before them. And, and you have uh, imagery, you know, this brightness, but also other imagery, such as um, a voice and glory and the cloud, you know, that, that's picked up from this passage that, that Jim read from, uh, from Exodus, where Moses goes on the mountain. And here Moses is on the mountain again, along with Elijah and Jesus. Now, the story of the Transfiguration, uh, a lot of scholars think, is actually. Um, a story of a post-resurrection appearance that, that got dropped into the middle of Jesus' life right before he's moving toward Jerusalem and, we're, and as we're hearing about, his, he's talking about the cross, you know, some dark times to come. Whatever the case, you have these two moments of glory the Transfiguration and Easter on either side of this movement toward the cross. Just as we have the Transfiguration and Easter on either side of Lent. That time in which we reflect on our mortality, our sin. And in the dark times of mortality and sin, sin exacerbates our mortality and mortality and the fear and concerns we have over it often exacerbate our sin. But what the bracket of Transfiguration Sunday and Easter, on e uh, and Easter, the resurrection, on either end, uh, what I think it means is that there's light that shines all the way through. As we celebrate Lent, you know, Jesus is still risen. As we go through difficult times, Jesus is still risen, Lord of life. And the story of Je Jesus is still our hope.
the story of Jesus is like a lamp that's turned on in the darkness. So we don't have to stub our toes or be afraid or wonder where we are. We walk in the light of God. We walk in the light of the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That God is our Lord. That God is our friend. That God challenges us. And that God loves us. We walk in the glory of the light of God. So as we move from Transfiguration, it's Sunday, into Lent, our prayer, our prayer, this might be Lord, help us to walk in the light of God. Show us your glory. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing.
a law and a love that leads us into becoming God's own daughters and sons. Therefore, let us gratefully give from that which has first been given to us, our lives, our talents, and our possessions.
festive offerings that they may be transfigured into your presence in the world. Amen. <laughs> Are there any other joys and concerns cards? <coughs> Let us pray. Great and gracious and glorious God, we, we thank you for uh, the light that shines in the darkness. Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And we thank you, O oh God, for those words uh, that say we, as his disciples, are the light of the world. And we pray that you will illumine us and bless us with lives lived that shine brightly uh, for your glory. We lift to you, O oh God, uh, the concerns of our hearts, and we, uh, we pray for, for Penny Ross, uh, the uh, Grant family's niece, and uh, we pray for the, uh, the healing of, uh, of her heart. We lift up, O oh God, uh, the Kinderman family as they uh, deal with uh, medical issues. We pray uh, for uh, Linda Miller and for Dwayne Quinn, Mike Terwilliger, and uh, so many others who are on our hearts and minds. We lift up uh, the Elo family and the, the loss of uh, Richard's father, Lewis, and we pray that you will uh, be with them and uh, bless them in their deep sense of loss, even as we uh, give you thanks for a long life uh, well lived. We pray, O oh God, for our nation and for our more immediate community and for our world. We pray that you will heal the divisions and the wounds that exist and that your spirit may blow um, across this country and around this world and uh, among us in, in the places where we live, uh, that you may be glorified and that we may uh, evermore know the depth of your love and your care and the, the peace of your presence. All these things we pray, O oh God, to your great glory and in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Will those who are serving come forward, please? And I think we need one more elder. Whoops. Okay. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord sat at table with disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and it was then that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Friends, this is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we give you our great thanks as we uh, contemplate uh, your glory shining among us, even in the midst of dark times. We lift to you, O oh God, uh, the concerns of our hearts and the lives we live, and we thank you that you are ever with us. Most especially, O oh God, we thank you for uh, the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
for his ascension and his reigning uh, for us and being with us in power in this and every place, in this and every time. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless this meal to nourish us and that we may be um, nourished and edified for the journey of faith and a life that glorifies you. All these things we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at table with disciples, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is for you. <coughs> Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul, giving this account, said, Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. We are invited to, uh, to hold the elements until everyone is served and then take them together. Uh, the uh, glasses in the middle of the trays of bread are, have uh, gluten-free uh, wafers in them. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Mm. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this moment of being lifted into your eternity at the heavenly banquet. We pray that indeed we may be nourished for the journey of faith, for lives that glorify you, and for life as the body of Christ in this world. May we shine with your glory as a witness to your love and the splendor of all that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now Susan is going to uh, 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 introduce our hymn, our closing hymn. <laughs> While Mary finds her way to the piano and while Ron gets to the drums, I wanted to just tell you a little something about the wonderful hymns that Pastor Bill chose as our closing hymn today. It's not quite our usual Presbyterian fair, but it's a wonderful piece to sing in the choirs gathered now down the center of the aisle. I want to just say a few things. We will sing the first verse. For those of you that are familiar with the piece, you're welcome to join us. By the time we get to the third or fourth, you'll know it, trust me. But um, also wanted to just mention one thing. As the verses go, we are marching in the light of God. We are dancing in the light of God. We are praying. We are singing. But just a word, when we get to the part about prayer, I love the Westminster Catechism tells us as Presbyterians that the purpose of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. I think that is fabulous. I love it. So we're not going to let the Baptists and the Pentecostals have all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to enjoy the glory and love of God and the service and all through today's worship. So I'm going to invite you to stand. And the last thing I want you to do is a little bit of practice. In the Old Testament, the position for prayer was open. And the reason for that was that in prayer, the, the belief was we are vulnerable and surrendered to our God. What we usually do when we feel that we're going to be harmed or have damage, we protect ourselves, we come before God like this. So when we get to pray, I'm going to encourage you to pray and to open your arms and your heart to God as we pray each time. So the choir will lead you in that. Mary, if you'll please introduce us. Ron is ready to. And we'll sing the first verse of set. Okay, fine. We'll sing the first verse. Here we go, Mary.
marching, dancing, praying, singing, living in the light of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit uh, be with you now and forever. And let all God's children say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Uh, let us share that peace with one another. And we're going to stay in the sanctuary for about three minutes. And then stay more. <laughs> but in about three minutes, we'll start the congregational meeting. Oh.